and welcome back to Unrig the System Summit, day three from New Orleans, Louisiana. We are staying on the campus of Tulane University where they've been tremendous hosts for us and really done an outstanding job. Represent.us, Josh Silver and his entire team have been absolutely really? amazing in not only delivering fantastic guests, but also just the whole southern nature of being friendly and kind it just really Tulane has been gorgeous. has been yeah. fantastic it's been a highlight here everyone's so welcoming and nice the weather's held up it's mardi gras tulane's been lovely and the lineup of speakers has been astonishing here as, as far as the breadth of information you get on the entire issue of system and voting and all that goes with it so it's sad to be wrapping up this third day but it's been information overload right in it, a has good way. it has been it has been it has been we're just going to keep bringing it to you. John Updike is the president of Open Primaries. Most of you follow Open Primaries in our audience, and you know well aware of what their mission is. And it is great to have, without further ado, the president of Open Primaries, great John Updike. How are you? I'm great. It's great to be here. Enjoying your, your time here? Yeah, it's been a good conference. Met a lot of very interesting people. Tell, them that, tell us about what you guys are currently working on, what's important, what's on your agenda. Well, as the name suggests, we're open primaries and we work on open primaries. Uh, we're, we're in some ways addressing this increasing paradox in American politics, which is that the system is getting more and more partisan and the voters are getting less and less partisan. Independent voters are now 44% of the electorate. Uh, it's an interesting, like in, in Oregon, for example, where they just enacted automatic voter registration. So everyone registers to vote. It's sixty percent of people are registering as independents when they when they register. So you're seeing that trend in the country, and yet the system is set up so that if you're an independent, you're a second class citizen, you don't get to vote in the primaries in many states. And even in those states that you do get to vote in the primaries, you're forced into a party silo. So we're looking to to, to build on the success of California and Washington and Nebraska where they say there's no Democratic primary, there's no Republican primary, there's a voter's primary. It's paid for with the tax dollars. Everybody gets to vote in it for whoever they want. We're trying to take that around the country. Let's talk about Florida, because I know you're doing you're involved in Florida right yeah. now. They they just made a change to what to the process of I think what, what your original intent was. Um, can you talk about where it is in Florida right now and, and what we can expect for 2018. Yeah, nothing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nothing. No, it was every 20 years in Florida they have something called the Constitutional Revision Commission. Yep. And this year that was created. It was appointed by the governor, uh, the, the, the chief justice, and the head of the assembly. It's a 37 member panel. It's a very um, insiders panel. And they look at changes to the Constitution, they held public hearings. And lo and behold, Hundreds of Floridians turned out to these public hearings really? to say, I went to vote for Donald Trump or Bernie Sanders or, you know, Jeb Bush on primary day and I was turned away. I was told I couldn't vote. And what, you know, I one guy drove 200 miles to a hearing, from, drove all the way up from Key West to Miami to testify and say, you know, this is the first election I was registered to vote, and they told me I couldn't, and I just was outraged. I had no idea. So the issue of opening the primary system in Florida, where 3.5 million registered voters are not allowed to vote in the primaries, kind of grew organically. And out of that, one of the commissioners, Bill Shafino, drafted a bill to open up the party primaries to independents. That morphed into a more radical proposal to eliminate party primaries altogether and go with the California system, the top two primary. That passed through the Elections and Ethics Subcommittee, six to three. We're lobbying all the way and organizing and getting great media support. Completely, this thing is completely unexpected. And it was just killed in the General uh, Operations Subcommittee, seven to nothing after 15 minutes of discussion and no debate. So we've gone through this nine-month process of the, the issue kind of emerging organically up and then one subcommittee that had no dis, no debate, no discussion in 15 minutes killed the whole thing. So how do you combat that then, John? I mean, that's, um, that's unbelievable. Well, <clears throat> we, we, ultimately in Florida we're going to have to petition to place something on the ballot, which is a very expensive process and we're 
building a coalition to be able to do that both grassroots and financially. It's a long-term process. The CRC process, the Constitutional Revision Commission, has been enormously growthful though because we've gotten tremendous positive media. Our grassroots coalition has grown. Um, we've gotten to know various commissioners, potential funders, so it's been a, a really great process even though the end result was to be sh you know, punched in the face. Yeah. You're not kidding. So. Looking back at when this, as you said, it really started to bubble up organically, have there been any surprises, any roadblocks that maybe you didn't expect? Not to be negative Nancy, but I just, I want to ask from your perspective in, in working with this, people maybe pushing back or naysayers or anything like that, or has it all been pretty positive? Have there been any struggles in that point? I mean, it's all struggle. The thing about open primary is that people don't sufficiently um, appreciate is that it has this veneer of kind of commonsensical, right. kind of simple. It's an incredibly provocative reform. It's very provocative to the political insiders, liberal, conservative, party, you know, Democrat, Republican, because you're basically saying those primaries don't belong to you. They belong to the voters. And the opposition is incredibly fierce for something as basic as, hey, if you're funding these elections, you should be able to vote in them. Something that, that, that goes back to no taxation without representation. It's as American as apple pie, but it is incredibly provocative. And it provokes liberal Democrats as much as it does conservative Republicans. So I'm not surprised by any, any of the opposition to it. Uh, well, we at IVN, uh, um, as you, those of the, that follow us know that we do podcasts and articles and videos and all kinds of things on our website, ivn.us, um, and our Facebook page. We encourage you where you're watching now to usually submit all those podcasts on, on our Facebook page. And we're excited to, to say that John is going to have his own podcast uh, coming up. And it's a very provocative name. Tell us hear more about that. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. John, um, well, tell us about your, your new IVM podcast. What is its name and when can people it's start? It's called The Pickle. It's called The Pickle. It's called The Pickle. Very my, nice. I my like goal it. is to do a slow build and to interview political, cultural, business, academic, people in and out of politics about the pickle that we're in as a country, yep. which is... We're the most it's a perfect successful euphemism. democracy in the history of the world. Yeah. We have this incredible track record of expanding our democracy over the last 200 years. Um, we're so successful and so wealthy and so privileged in many different ways, and yet we seem to be in a pickle jar. We seem to be kind of caught in what might be some limitations of our own success and I want to talk to people about that I don't want to go in there and say and have narrow conversations about electoral reform I want to talk about how are we doing as a, as a culture and as a community and as a country and mm -hmm. in this world that's so changing so quickly um, well, we're excited to be have you be part of it. I mean, I'm very excited to have the pickle and and. You're gonna have a vote on what your graphic should be, your thumbnail graphic with this pickle you're talking about. You can have a vote. <laughs> you can a well, the, yes, I, I mean, the, you guys are working. Put it on to the popular vote, the John. The pickle trying to escape from the pickle jar. Yeah, I like I that love, one. But we'll, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Very excited. It's going to be a work in progress. I really don't want to launch it with. Mm. I know what it's going to be. I want to get feedback. I want to see. Yeah who people are interested in talking to. And, I, you know, I'm not a journalist. I've, I'm not an interviewer. I, I'm going to have to grow in terms of learning that skill. So I'm looking forward to it. And IVN is such a great platform. You, well, know, you guys have built such a great connection to a, an emerging uh, It's an emerging market. It's the independent vote. The, yeah. the open primaries, independent voter. Yeah. Insert. Yeah. Market. We're um, excited that you're joining us again. We're this is day three. We've been with you Friday, Saturday, now again Sunday. Uh, Jeff Powers, Lindsey France. We're having a great time at Tulane University, um, talking all things. Unrigged the system summit. Been a very successful summit. Josh Silver. They sold out uh, the Absolutely summit, so it's been incredibly successful. Um, last one from me. I don't know if you have anything else for John Updike uh, with open primaries. John, if people want to get involved with open primaries. How do they go about doing that? Just go to openprimaries.org. 
Okay. Um, sign up, sign a petition, give us your name and address. You know, we'll, we'll be in touch. We've got local campaigns, proto campaigns, pre campaigns, embryonic campaigns going on all over the country. Lots of opportunities to get involved, and we're big. We're big on developing citizen leaders, and um, you know, one of the things that. For me, I think the cutting edge issue for the reform movement is starting to not simply talk about the what, but the how. The what being, look, everyone in this room can talk endlessly about this election reform or that election reform or this change or that change. We are not collectively as skilled as we need to be as entering into a conversation with the American people about yeah. Yeah. changing not just this law or that law, but how we do politics. And there's some great leaders here. I was particularly impressed with the uh, Voters Not Politicians crew from Michigan, who've entered into a really great conversation with the people of Michigan about unrigging the system there. And there's a lot to learn about doing political change from the bottom up as opposed to the top down. Very good. Great. Well. Great to have you, John. Thank Great you very much you. for coming on. Thank Great you. Great to have you both. John, thank, thank, you. thank you. All right, see you soon. Thank Exciting you, John. Stuff. John Updike with Open Primaries, intelligent man. Great conversation. Yeah, Love what he's involved with, there. right? Yeah. Lot to lot to chew on there. Um, we are going to take a little bit of a break, but we have a few more guests. Yes, we do. For we Sunday, some now. special guests coming up. So stay tuned, stay with us, and we will see you in a little while. Bye bye.